Agnes, Agnes, look at this. Huh? What's the matter? In his drawer behind a pile of junk. This. What? He said sneaky, and it's 4 o'clock in the morning, and now this? Not for heaven's sake. Look! Bourbon? Your son, the result of your modern upbringing. But what? Where? What does all this mean? It's time. It's time I took over his education. But he told you he's going to be late tonight. Uh, he especially asked permission to go to that dance. I gave him the key myself. Where'd you put that thing? What thing? My old savings drop. What do you want that for? Did he prove all this? You think it's perfectly natural that a child who's in bed and paints down until 4 o'clock in the morning? No, I just don't think there's much point in us staying up all night, uh, wearing ourselves sick about something we can't do until the morning. No, but uh, he told you, and she'll be the right, the child has the right to a bit of gaiety. One day, let me explain the difference between gaiety and delirium tremens. Where are you going to do, Michael? I'm going downstairs, where I've been since 1 o'clock this morning. And when he comes home, I... I won't let you. If you're going to beat that child, you'll have to do so over my dead body. Don't interfere, Agnes. I mean it, Michael. Uh, even if he has taken opium, I will not let you beat that child. Well, in that case, we had better call the police. But he told you, and truly... But he told you, and that you know these child, children's parties go on till dawn. Now, in my young days, if I was told to be home at a certain hour, I... What in the name of Sandy have you got in your head? Why, it's a very nice thing. Everybody's wearing them. But what is it? A slumber helmet. Slumber helmet? Bourbon in the bedroom, children's parties are going till dawn, and slumber helmets? All right, I'm going to bed. Listen to me, will you? I have a, I have a choice between bed and the madhouse. I prefer bed. I have a light to live. Good night. I, I hope you enjoy being a drunk with your mother. I hate to spoil your performance as an irate father, but I can't help thinking what your attitude would be like if it were not Robert, but Lizzie who stayed out all night. Exactly the same, with this difference that Lizzie would never do such a thing. Huh. But she happens to be the only sane member of this family, except me. I could tell you something about her that would... No, I better not. If you think I'm going to fall for that Stone Age woman's trick, of hinting at something that's stopping. That girl is as straight and as sensible as, as a glass of milk. Milk? At least she doesn't go to bed with a bottle of bourbon. Mmm. What? Mmm. Nothing, nothing. Agnes, you aren't by any chance suggesting that she goes to bed with anything else, are you? No. I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just sick and tired of you coming down with a ton of bricks on that poor fat boy while she's allowed to do whatever she pleases. So? I've, I have an unhealthy preference for my daughter. Is that it? No, I'm not saying that. I... All right, say it, say it! What? Oedipus! Who? Oh, leave me alone. In his drawer, did you say? Shut up. <laughs> Darling, I know you never concern yourself with the children's education except for an uh, occasional battle called the hysteria, but this time I think you're going a little too far, if you don't mind my saying so. What else do you expect me to do? I've spent every waking hour earning money. You're my second in command. I believe certain things to you, but if I see those things are obviously going wrong, it is my duty to intervene. If that's your conception of our relationship, then you better think of something more than a shaving crop and a writing straw. Writing crop! And it's not a matter of thinking something better. It's... Michael! Is that him? him? Is that him? I thought I heard you gay. Robert! Is that you? Robert! No. Fine. Why don't you go back to bed? Because I'm worried. Why, that's nonsense. <laughs> and so are you. What gives you that idea? You're pouting your face at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> what drawer was it in? The one where it keeps all this junk. But it can't be. It can't be true. I don't believe it. Well, there you are. How did you find it? I was downstairs waiting for him to get home. I got more and more worried, so I decided to check his room, see whether perhaps he had climbed into the window. Then I happened to glance into an open drawer, and there it was. But it can't be. A child can't be sleep drinking on the slide without his mother knowing it. Let's well, face it, my dear. The child is no longer a child. He is a man. When I looked into that drawer and found his old teddy bears, his steam engine, and then that bottle, I, I can't tell you what I felt. Suppose, of course it isn't, but suppose, of course, it is true. Whatever shall we do? I don't know. See a doctor. Nonsense. It's perfect.
childish curiosity. A boy has to try everything once. If that's what you're at, Jim, I'll end up by trying murder once. By the way, what were you gonna say about Lizzie? She's in love. What? She's secretly engaged. To whom? To the boy next door. To that eight? To that pie face? I think it's quite serious. But she's only nonsense. She's not a child anymore. She's the same thing Robert is, I suppose. I won't be surprised if one of these days that boy comes and asks you for her hand. If he does, I'll shoot him. A darling. But she's only 16. Agnes, this is a nightmare. But sweetheart. She can't be in love. I certainly not with that. Why not? After spending her whole life with me, she can't fall in love with something that hatched out of an egg. Are you suggesting that the only person that child will be allowed to fall in love with is a younger edition of yourself? Of course not. Don't be indecent. All I'm saying is that we should have given them taste. They should have inherited our taste. You seem to have inherited a taste for bourbon. I don't see any <laughs> joke about this. This ought to be the worst night of my life. I'm not joking. I just don't see the point of us staying up all night and worrying ourselves sick about something we obviously can't do until morning. Come, go, let's go back to bed. You go, to, you go back to bed. I'll wait up for him. Do you, uh, do you want me to make you a cup of tea? Tea? Do you know we haven't had a single crisis in our life yet, which your ultimate solution wasn't a cup of tea? I'm sorry. I was only trying to be sensible about it. I know you are. I apologize if I said anything I didn't mean. I think perhaps you both need a swig of this. Have you got any glasses up here? Only two glasses. Michael! <laughs> what is that? Cod liver oil! Oh. How on earth did it get into this bottle? God knows. The little moss must have tried to set a trap for me. But what? Michael, oh. now I know. Well, it's the limit. What? Do you remember, three years ago, you had to take a spoonful of cod liver oil every morning before bed? Well, I checked, or he refused to do it in my presence. Yeah, I checked his bottle every morning, but he poured it into this. Agnes, do you mean to say the stuff I swallowed is three years old? Oh, that little monkey. Now I'm gonna wait till he gets home. I think we'd better call the doctor. This stuff must be putrid by now. You'll have to talk to him, Michael. This is one time you'll have to talk to him. I, Michael, that's him. Michael, no, don't go that far. No, Michael. Three-year-old cod liver oil? <laughs>